Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99 back on the fight front once again. Damn, man, this was an explosive fight, man. This was a really big fight for the, both of these featherweights here, Megan Anderson. She was called out by Felicia Spencer, and Spencer, she took it to Megan Anderson with the first round submission, rear naked choke. And it was like I said, man, um, it was like I said in my uh, prediction video, man, I felt like Megan Anderson, she was going to have to keep it standing to win this fight. And if she was going to want to win this fight, she was going to have to do it by a knockout. But... The ground was going to be all Phenom, and Phenom, she definitely owned it, man. She definitely owned the ground. Um, they opened the round right away. Both fighters already looking to establish their strengths. You know, Megan Anderson, she was kind of coming forward, trying to walk Felicia down and keep her good range. And uh, she was setting up the right hand nicely. You know, she was able to crack Felicia two times with the right hand. But then Felicia, when she got hit two times, man, she, I know she probably felt the power. So right away, she took a page out of Holly Holmes' book and said, hell no. <laughs> you know, right now I'm going to close this distance, get the clinch, and get Megan uh, back to the fence. And this is where Felicia wanted to be. You know, she wanted to smother the range, keep the taller fighter like Megan kind of sprawled out and kind of keep her legs kind of tangled up. And um, that's still something like Megan Anderson she needs to work on, like trying to be able to you know learn how to fight tall you know what i mean like you got fighters like even in boxing lennox lewis deontay wilder you know they're learning how to control their their bodies you know i know when they're, you're so long you got to kind of know your reach and know how how far your legs can be spread apart to keep your balance and i think megan anderson still kind of has trouble with that because um whenever uh, felicia had her to the fence she really had a hard time trying to keep her feet um, as far as like, you know, protecting from being taken down. Cause uh, every time she would kind of move, Felicia would kind of scramble on her back real quick. And, you know, she was able to get her to the ground. Cause you know, uh, Felicia may be shorter, but she's still a, you know, she's still a good sized girl. You know, she's still a thick girl and she's still pretty strong. So once she was able to kind of muscle uh, Megan around and get her off balance, you know, the longer legs, she was able to get to the back of uh, Megan Anderson and trying to hold somebody like Felicia Spencer up, you know, it's going to bring her down. So when she gets able to get her on her back, she got Megan on all fours and was able to good, land some good head strikes while Megan was trying to struggle to control Felicia's arms. You know, she was trying to get the arm so she wouldn't get hit as much and, you know, she could try to, like, slide out. But there was really no way she could use the fence because it was like she still seemed a little bit amateurish as far as, like, trying to get somebody off their back. Not not really panicking, but, you know, at the same time not knowing what to do because um, once she got further and further pulled to the ground more strikes for Felicia was able to soften Megan up and you know she just kind of flattened her out you know she just flattened her back she flattened her on her stomach and she was able to tighten the arm around the neck and she got the choke submission man and um that was all she wrote man that's you know there's nothing else to say man it was just a good explosive fight uh like I said it, it definitely wasn't going to go to distance um I feel like it was going to go you know either one or two and whoever could get their style going that's who it was going to be and uh Felicia Spencer right now you know I feel like she's uh you know, she's a beast. Even in uh, whenever she was a uh, featherweight champion and in Victor, I felt like, you know, she was definitely demolishing all these girls, you know, just with her overall, like, gritty, you know, she has, like, a very gritty, uh, unpredictable style. And um, I think it's going to be a trouble for a lot of girls. Um, I know she called out Cyborg, and Cyborg said she would fight her, but I think that's a little premature. You know, this is her first fight in the UFC against somebody like Megan Anderson, who we don't, who really, really don't know you know, was 100%. At the same time, we don't really know if this is the same. We know this isn't the same Megan Anderson that was former featherweight champion in Victor. And uh, speaking of Megan Anderson, I really feel like, you know, she's really missed a step since, uh, you know, her winning the title and in Victor. Um, I really feel like um, she hasn't uh, grown. I think the, the move to the UFC was kind of fast and she wasn't really moved right. You know, I think it's obvious she wasn't moved right, you know, calling out an experienced fighter like Holly Holm, you know, as her first fight in the UFC after a long layoff from Invicta, you know, then getting thrown in there and getting exposed as a green fighter. And then, you know, the Cats and Ghana win. It, it was a win, but it really wasn't like a solid statement in the game, you know, especially in the UFC. And then you get thrown in this fight against a powerhouse like Invict, uh, like the Invicta champion, um, the Phenom. You know, who who's just coming off her trail, you know, her her trail of, you know, winning the belt and beating Pam Bam Soros. And, you know, I really feel like um, Megan Anderson has to kind of take a step back. She got to take a step back and go back to the basics, man. Either go back to Invicta or, yeah, go back to Invicta. You know, I, I think she should go back to Invicta and kind of fight those caliber of opponents and then kind of, you know, find that right training as far as, um, you know, getting her ground game right as far as, you know, somebody with her frame and her body size, you know. 
because uh, she's a big fighter. And I feel like if she's able to use her range, she can never get taken to the ground. You know, she really knows how to she has to really know how to work that takedown defense, man. But um, yeah, man, overall, it was just a good fight. You know, respect to uh, Phenom because I feel like, you know, her head's in the right place right now. And uh, she really wants this. You know, she really wants to reign the featherweight division if the featherweight division ever picks up in the UFC. You know what I mean? Because right now. Uh, who else is there, you know, besides Cyborg, Jerrain Duranime, uh, you can have uh, Holly Holm uh, move back up, uh, Amanda Nunes, Macy Chason, who's fighting at Bantamweight herself. So it's really hard to say what's in store for uh, the Phenom at Featherweight in the UFC. At least we know we have, a, you know, a ranking of fighters in Invicta. So um, with that being said, Megan and Ashley go back and fight some of them. You know what I mean? She could go back and... Uh, you know, go back on that right trail that she needs to get on. But, um, yeah, that's all I got on this one, guys. Um, overall, it was a good fight, a uh, good, solid fight. Uh, you know, again, shout out to Felicia Spencer. You know, she called out Megan Anderson whenever she won the title. And, you know, they set up the UFC fight. And, you know, she wanted all the smoke, and she got it, man. So, um, yeah, that's all I got on this one, guys. Let me know what y'all thought of the fight. What, uh, what do y'all think uh, Megan Anderson should do from here? Uh, what do you think uh, Felicia Spencer should do? Should she fight Cyborg, or is that too premature? Uh, let me know in the comments section, guys. I'm out. Combo Breaker 99. Make sure y'all subscribe. Peace.